All right, we are back, and I am so embarrassed right now. Uh, thank you for sitting through that. That was wonderful, Tasteless, and I have to say, I at least think you're a demigod. <laughs> thank you, Artosis. Um, okay, now, unless I'm mistaken, we are ready to go. So, uh, remember that thing that we, we sort of bungled last time? Guys, make some noise. Make more noise than we even heard last time when we got that great panning shot before we start this game. And the game is now loaded, so we're going to throw that up on screen for you guys. Our Taryn versus Taryn. MMA against MVP. We're going to go get the players introduced now. So down here, in the bottom left, the game genie Taryn. He is... Wait for it. All right. I am MVP. So focused right now. He wants this so badly to be the undisputed best player. Meanwhile, in the upper right hand starting location, mentored by Slayer's Boxer, a champion of MLG, he is. He is. All right. Enjoying the names is bumpy no matter where you are. No, man, it does not matter. Wow. Okay. Well, MMA making a strong decision so early on, proxying a barracks. And this is meant to catch anyone off guard who goes command center first. Right. This map is great for going command center first. It's such a long map. But, you know, MVP, as we said before, he always chooses the right strategy. He's making a barracks, which means that I don't think he'll die to this. But no. there's a possibility for some harassment damage. Oh my god, and he just barely missed that. I'm shocked he actually didn't even uh, go by the watchtower. And a note, uh, that actually, uh, the barracks is rallied at the Zelnaga watchtower, so that way uh, he can use that Marine to then control that location, drive out any SCVs that try to slip by there. And in the meantime, he has taken a gas. So this, this could turn into a factory, this could turn into a proxy factory, it could even turn into a Reaper. Yeah, absolutely. So the Marine's coming out now. And again, you know, oftentimes I think people associate having a proxy building with an all-in or this game's going to end right away, but this is not the case here. Yeah, this is in no way an all-in. Of course, we see that this SCV not finding the barracks quite yet. He is building a command center down the low ground and making a few Marines himself. Uh, and ooh, we are going to see a proxy factory as well. Oh, wow. This is getting pretty cool, Tasis. We've seen this from a few players, notably Nada, recently. And you can get a lot of aggression on early. If he gets up there with a Hellion and the same amount of Marines as his opponent, before there's a bunker, that is just deadly. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting. I thought it was just going to be a couple Marines rallied up there. Uh, you know, try to see if he can get the command center. If he doesn't, whatever, he lifts off and leaves. Okay, and he's going to go for reactor Hellions. And, you know, Artosis, this could be very good because, look, MVP's making a bunker, but who cares? Hellions can just drive right by that. They can drive right by Tasteless because they, can. they have four wheels, so I guess they're a car. And, and now we have the barracks finishing, the reactor uh, almost done. And I am sorry, this is not even that kind of strategy. This ah. is getting more and more technical. He's going to go for a push. He's actually getting a factory yes. over here. It and looks I, like, like siege tanks. I think with siege Marines. tanks with a bunker push. You lift that barracks up. You gain extra vision. And this is going to be so difficult to stop as MVP. This is a strategy, guys. We just do not see. Yeah, this is actually very, very old school. And in fact, MVP just now started his factory while we already have a siege tank almost halfway done. MVP is going to be so hard pressed to stop this. And he knows something is up, Tasteless. He's already making a second bunker, but that is not going to help That's against siege tanks. That's not going to help. Bunker's not exactly good against siege tanks in this case. You know what's interesting about this? This is actually reminiscent Ooh. of a, Oh, now he saw it. He should know what's going on. Yes. This is reminiscent of an old StarCraft 1. A strategy in Terran versus Zerg uh, before Brood War. That is very where right. You, you just bunker pushed him. Now, now, as you guys see, the barracks being lifted, it's a spotter. It's so that the siege tanks 
can get the optimal amount of range here. And, oh man. Already pressuring that bunker. MVP starting to repair, knowing that he cannot stop the siege tank, but he has to buy time. And a lot of people don't really acknowledge uh, the rate at which damage is dealt here. On these uh -oh. players, he's, he's going to go for that siege tank. He wants to target on that siege tank. If he can kill off one siege tank, this this rush will be almost stopped, but cannot do it. MMA pulls back in plenty of time. And that is a lot of SCVs to have not had mining. Okay, now he's leapfrogging the siege tanks. He knows at least one, uh, at some point in time, the SCVs and Marines will have to come forward, but there's a second siege tank in the back to deal extra damage. The bunker coming under heat. Here we go! Sending a lot of SCVs realizing, uh-oh, that is a bad idea. And wow, MMA doing a ton of damage to MVP. The command center is being relocated. MVP knows he's up against the ropes right now. And this is going to be a pretty difficult situation to get out of. Uh, is the bunker is taking so much damage. Don't forget those SCVs. They're gonna be hit with splash damage, too Uh-oh, he's breached his opponent's base and this is really bad We have 44 supply to 29 almost no units out for MVPs desperately He does have siege mode so losing oh, that the is tech not... lag the tech lag the oh, tech lag man. if he gets the tech lab It's no siege tanks. And that's ultimately checkmate Indeed it is. We have so many Marines up there. He's even landed the spotter barracks to make more and more Marines. It's really looking like MMA is going to take this first set. Starport coming in here now as we have buildings being pushed farther and farther back. I honestly, guys, just do not see anybody recovering from this. It is 51 supply to 27. That is almost two times as much. He's got sea shanks in the base making all sorts of buildings lift off. He has to rebuild the add-ons. It takes a long time. As you saw there, he's already lost a lot of SCVs. Oh, man, this is this is just... MVP's going to have to GG here. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, the orbital is getting hit here. <laughs> yeah, the or, the orbital is... He's actually going to have to use some of his SCVs to repair the orbital. He's already low on SCVs. Uh, there's a Viking out now. Does anybody care? No, nobody really cares that there's a Viking out now because there's well. siege tanks hitting the orbital. And even now, the starport hitting a hit. Meanwhile, MMA coming up with his own Vikings. Very I don't expect smart. this to last that much longer. Well, you know, MVP knows his only chance here is to get out a few Vikings, kill off any spotting barracks. But it looks like MMA is not going to give him time. He's going to come over here, kill some depots, kill the gas. And MVP is not going to be able to stay alive long enough to outrange his opponent with siege tanks and Vikings. The siege tanks hitting the orbital now. It's still going on. Uh, he has about half his SCVs, He's actually more than half repairing, and he's going in for the kill move now. The supply of MVP is absolutely plumbing, landing those Vikings, but against Siege Tanks, they will do no good at all, and, and that is it, GG. I have to ask myself if we are starting to see the beginning of a comeback. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. At, at, at the beginning of an upset could be occurring here. He won one game. He's he got did. the momentum. You see MMA is MVP actually looks startled there. That is not how he normally looks after a game in the no. GSL finals. Normally he's like this is like, ah, yeah, I'm gonna buy stuff. <laughs> I have so much money. Like, yeah. <laughs> but uh, in this case, no. No, that time he got completely on that build was very solid. It was extremely good against what MVP does. I uh, we need to join this game. I don't know. Uh, what the next strategy is going to be, but let's face it, that was a very well, uh, well chosen strategy there from MMA, and it was one that I, I wouldn't have expected to work on MVP. MVP is supposed to be the guy who's coming in here with the best build. Uh, usually, it's him messing it up, but I rarely ever say this guy picked um, a better uh, build than his opponent. Really impressive. That, that's very true, tasteless. I mean, he he looked good. He picked the right build, and normally that is what happens on the other side. So. Yeah. Congrats to MMA taking that first win. That is such an important win. Yeah. It is pretty impressive. So uh, going into this next map, uh, our map is going to be uh, dual site. Uh, well, what do you expect to see here, Artosis? I expect to see uh, MVP show us why he's pretty much undefeated on this map. You know, he's like 9-1 and one or something, if I recall correctly, and he is just so deadly here. I don't expect to see the same type of build from MMA, though. 
Oh, no, no, I would only expect that to be used once. Now, another factor here is uh, the gold bases play such a big role in some of these sneakier strategies because the gold bases, first of all, they don't have rocks on them, uh, and second of all, they're not in locations that you're just going to walk by. You know, it's the opposite of, like, Zelnaga Caverns. Uh, so sometimes we see situations where somebody will take an early gold base. I could see that happening from either side here. It's going to be pretty interesting. Especially if we see Reapers, so... We're going to go to a quick little break, and then we will be back with uh, game number two. So sit tight. We'll see you soon.